Hey, so the green screen is messing with my shirt, but I'm dealing with it. Um, we are going to take a paper pattern and turn it into a pattern in CLO. Um, and I have already photographed the pattern and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So I have my pattern here that I want to digitize and bring into CLO. Um, and I'm going to take some pictures of it, but there has to be a ruler in the picture. And just to make things super clear for myself, I am going to mark with a Sharpie one inch apart somewhere. Um, and that's just to give myself scale. Um, sorry. All right. Uh, and then we are going to take pictures and it's important that my picture not look like this or, you know, like that or like this it should be straight on, not tilted in any direction. Um, and Right about there is where I would take it. And I would honestly try to just get them all in one shot. Um, all right. And we're back. And we are now going to go over to CLO. And uh, we are going to chat about how to get that in here. So we need to draw a rectangle. Um, and we're only going to focus on the 2D pattern window. Um, so I am actually going to pop it out and we can like kind of drag it back into this space so we have more space to work at. And if you ever need to like switch back and forth between panels, you can switch back and forth down here. Um, so I've clicked on the internal line tool, but I actually need... Um, either the polygon tool or the rectangle tool, and we will stick with the rectangle tool. Um, and I actually know that my, I'm sorry, I'm looking at them over there. My t-shirt looks like it's about uh, three feet tall. So we're going to try, um, doing we just click once to make a rectangle and we are going to make a rectangle that is um i guess 36 inches tall and just an indeterminate width um any any kind of width um and this i'm just guesstimating that it's 36 inches tall it might be helpful to actually uh measure it. Um, we'll just go a hundred wide. It really doesn't matter right now. We can hit okay. And it's going to add this piece to the, um, to the program. And if we actually, if we go back to the 3d mode, it'll fill this eventually. If we go back to the 3d mode, we can see that there is in fact now a piece of fabric. And if we hit simulate, it would fall. Um, and eventually crumple and hit the ground, but we don't have time for that. Um, back to the 2D window, we are going to fill this with a texture. This is indeed the best way to do this in CLO. Um, so where it says fabric one, um, that's perfect. We could add a new fabric or we can keep it on fabric one. We already know that this has fabric one applied to it. Um, I accidentally am going to create another rectangle. Whoops. Back to the selection tool and off of the rectangle tool. Right. We can double check what fabric this has selected to it by scrolling down to fabric. Um, and I guess I will add a second fabric um, for this process. So we'll make sure that this particular piece has fabric two applied to it and not fabric one. Um, doesn't really matter. Now in fabric two, we are going to click on it and look at its property panel, property editor. And what we need is where it says texture. 
under the material and I've already, I've already scrolled past information and stuff under material, basic parameters, texture. I'm going to click these little dots, little arrows. I'm not sure what that image is. And we are going to navigate to that image to edit the scale of it. So it's more an appropriate scale. We need to talk about the 2D scale tool, which I definitely should have talked about the other day when I was talking, when I did my pattern lecture. Um, but basically with this tool, you can move where the pattern sits. You can also rotate the direction of the pattern. I'm going to undo that. And then up here at the right with this selected, we can um, change the scale of the pattern. Um, so we can scale it wider or taller, um, but we want to keep the proportions. That's very important for us. Um, so we are actually going to use, oops, this center one and just scale it larger. And I'm going to scale it until scale and pan until it looks like it's about the size of, because remember that this, this image is about 36 inches. Um, so I am going to, that might be too big, um, but that's why we have the ruler in there to make perfectly sure of the scale. Um, so now that we've done that, you guessed it, I'm going to make another rectangle that is now just one inch by one inch. And we are going to use that to check my scale and just keep adjusting from there. Um, so let's zoom in. Loading. There it is. Oops. And let's make sure that this little piece has fabric one um, so it won't be trying to render fabric like that and oh my gosh this is very very close we are going to scale this image down just a little bit and we can again just do that um with this tool uh and i'm just going to keep adjusting until it's spot on um and that's really is, I'll try going even a little bit smaller. That really is uh, one of the best ways to get an image in here to scale. Um, and now we are just going to trace the pieces. All right, perfect. I'm going to delete this square. We don't need it. Uh, so now this is exactly the right size. Eventually this rectangle will be deleted, so it doesn't matter. Um, we could scale it and the image should stay the same size. So if we didn't want all this extra, that won't change anything. And now I can come to my new polygon tool and I can start tracing. Um, and remember, if I... If I need to rotate the image at all, I totally can. Um, so like if I, if I need, you know, this line to be perfectly upright and then eventually I'll need this line to be perfectly upright, I would have to rotate the image back a little bit. Um, but part of this is just lens distortion that we are going to have to kind of correct as we go, um, just by, you know, measuring, um, so we're going to start drawing and if I want this to be symmetrical, I'm going to start in the center and um, come up and then somewhere up here, I am going to right click and choose mirror creation across Y axis. And now we have both sides, um, although this is a woven shirt. so. I'm pretty sure it's going to be uh, mad at me for having this uh, 
symmetrical and closed, or at least she might not be able to actually pull it over her head. But that's okay. It's just a shirt block. Um, we can always finesse it later. We're just kind of trying to get the ideas going. Um, right, and we can do the same thing on the back um, and trace all of these pieces individually. Let's make sure they all have fabric one assigned. Um, and then we would be able to sew this. So please let me know if you have any questions. Um, it's pretty straightforward. We're just, you know, making a rectangle and applying a fabric texture to it, but then we're using that fabric texture just to, uh, keep things just to get things to scale so that they can be traced over. Um, and then we can delete fabric to entirely that has the uh, special image put on it. Um, so please let me know if you have any questions about this. It uh, hopefully has been pretty straightforward. Sorry, I'm really out of focus right now, um, but you don't care. And I will see you all later.